Ifedayo Durosimi Eti, an author, entrepreneur, and a part of the global shippers community. Ife is the founder of AGS Tribe, a social enterprise created to democratize opportunities for entrepreneurs and nonprofits in Africa. In this next interview, Ife tells me how she found her path despite strong headwinds. Ife Dayodurosimieti, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Well, great work you're doing, Thank showing, you. teaching, and linking young Nigerians and Africans up with opportunities in, Nigerian, in Nigeria and on the continent. How did you get into your line of work? <sighs> to be honest, I, don't, I like to say that I got in here by mistake because I actually didn't think that there was a whole development you know, space out there. Um, I used to work in Nigerian breweries, and that was what even first introduced me to corporate social responsibility and sustainability. Then we used to build schools across Nigeria for um, people in low-income communities. We used to do all kinds of things for, for people. So um, while I was there, I decided to start a business because I realized that people weren't doing um, locally made furniture for children in Nigeria, and I saw that there was a gap there. So I started it, and I never thought I wanted to be an entrepreneur, and that's how you know, I just one thing after the other, we made one crib to the second crib to the third crib. And that's how I got into entrepreneurship. So my job as an entrepreneur, my business started, you know, growing and then my business needed my attention. So that's how I became an entrepreneur. But on my journey through entrepreneurship, um, I saw that there was a grant opportunity available to an entrepreneurship um, foundation and I applied for the grant and we got the grant um, for the business and a lot of people started, started asking me oh how did you apply for this grant how did you hear about it I applied for another grant with variant advisory as well and we also got the grant um, from variant advisory and other grants as well so people kept on asking me several questions so I started doing you know videos online live videos on Instagram small workshops teaching people how to apply for stuff and before I knew it, it just blew. And that's how I decided to, you know what, write a book because it now started taking me out of my business. So I now realized that I was really, really passionate about it. And before, in fact, throughout my life, or for the longest time, I've been extremely passionate about um, women. So I decided to channel all my energy into um, entrepreneurship and also promoting gender equality. So that's how I got into my line of work. So wow. it was a long journey, but I got here eventually and I'm, I'm excited to be working in purpose. And you're still continuing the journey. Yes. An interesting part of your story, you already mentioned the fact that you work with you worked with Nigeria breweries. Um, I, when I was reading about you, you started working in London yes. uh, after you did your MBA. Yes. And, but your dream job was in Nigeria. Yes. Tell us about that. I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it will be very, very awkward for a lot of Nigerians to hear mm -hmm. that, you know, you were working in the UK. You already yeah. had a job there. You did your, your MBA there and you wanted to come back home. Why? You know, it's so funny because I actually had the opportunity to stay there because I didn't need any work permits. I'm also British. And, but from, the day, from day one of my MBA, I knew that I was coming back to Nigeria. I knew that Nigeria needed me. I knew that there were a lot of opportunities in Nigeria. So from day one, I started looking for a job in Nigeria. And two months into my MBA, I got a job with um, Fidelity Bank. So I already knew that, okay, that's my safety net, but I still wanted more. And then I started hearing about different opportunities in Nigeria. I started going for career fairs so that I could meet, you know, a host of other employers. And when I saw Nigerian breweries, I knew that, okay, this is, you know, the job I actually want. And that's how I got, that's how I got, you know, the job. So just as I finished, I already knew that I wanted to be in Nigeria. Why? Because I felt like there, there was a lot of um, development that still needed to be done. I felt like there were a lot of... Um, people who were like untapped talents and if people like us who had you know some sort of knowledge or expertise didn't go back then Nigeria would be you know remain the same so I knew that I had a calling there was something you know calling me back to Nigeria that okay that you need to go back you need to help people you need to help women you need to you need to lend your voice especially for women I, I had that strong um, calling to you know let people let people especially women know that they have a voice and they don't have to you know stay back in the in the background i knew that if people it, or organizations ha had like women in top positions or women at the table then better decisions will be made so i i knew that i just needed to be back here do you have when you have when you're in conversations with your friends yeah uh i'm sure you know you definitely have friends who have relocated mm -hmm. uh, do you get that sense when, when you're talking with them about the hope that you feel for this country and 
and the mm -hmm. fact that you're needed here and things mm -hmm. of the sort. What did they tell you? They're like, ah, if they are your own. <laughs> For the people who have moved. But the, I have people who have also moved back with me and they're like, you know, if we can do this, we can change the world, we can change Nigeria, you know, we can set good examples. So I talked to, um, to different people and I've also encouraged some people to also come back to Nigeria. And, you know, some of the people who have come back, I've also told them, you know, even if you cannot get a job, you can start your own business. You can also be an employer. So, and I always tell them, you know, it's all about having that mindset, having that entrepreneurial mindset, even if in your job, you can still have that mindset of responsibility of ownership where you know nobody needs to tell you what to do you take it as your own and that's all i think would you know help you get yourself to the next level so that's mm -hmm. what i preach to people every day so i just feel like you know people just need to understand the kind of market they're in and maximize all the benefits that are in nigeria tell me about this you mentioned the young african leadership uh, initiative program that's yali the yali mm -hmm. program you've also been a panelist at uh, harvard university's african development conference talking about women in democracy and how it affects businesses. I'm very interested in that link, women in democracy. Oftentimes when we're talking about women in politics, you're not enough. When mm -hmm. you look at the figures, the National Assembly, mm -hmm. the State House of Assemblies, how did that conversation go, especially when you look at the demographic of young women? It was really funny because I was literally having, I didn't go to Harvard to have, to be a panelist. I only went there as a guest. And I was having a conversation with um, some people who, who knew about Nigeria, who are also global shapers, um, people who are already making impact across across the world. And the, the lady just looked at me and said, please, I would like you to lend your voice and be on this panel. So that's how I joined the panel. And it was interesting because in Nigeria, there are only about 3% of women in elective office. And you just look at it and say, why is this happening? You know, there are a lot of women who... A lot of... I think it started back when women didn't really have proper education. And without proper education you're most likely not going to get elected. So if we have more women in offices, if, if when we were having that conversation, we realized that this problem has been from time immemorial. When parents, you know, they, they didn't think it was very important for them to send their children to school. If you don't have that backing, if you don't have that support. Children. Yeah, female children, exactly. If you don't have that support, then it will be difficult for you later in life to even say you want to go into office. And it didn't just end with just education. You also need to have that financial muscle. And that was where the problem was. Men, they're together. Most times when you see men, they support themselves. But women, sometimes they support the, to be support ourselves but we don't have enough financial muscle to take us to that level to be able to say you know i have a voice i want to be at this table and all of that so that was how the conversation went most of the people who were on that panel were also women and it was you know the same thing and i was even the only nigerian on that panel and it was the same all around across africa the main issue especially for women in in um, politics or women in um, offices is that the reason why they cannot go through elections properly is because they don't have enough support and they don't have enough that financial muscle to help them. You intend to go into politics sometime? Oh yes, it's <laughs> in my it's in my blood. So <laughs> definitely, well, yes. we'll definitely be looking out for you on the political <laughs> terrain. What would you say to the young person who perhaps is not very hopeful? Who I mean, there are still loads of young people who want to leave this country for very good reasons. Some people might say, I have not felt government support in my life all the days I have been a young person. Um, I'm not very hopeful that if I don't know anyone, you know, things will go mm -hmm. well for me. If they, were, if they had the opportunity to watch you right now, what mm -hmm. would you say to them, especially about hope in Nigeria at a time when we've just clocked 59? I think what I would say to any Nigerian who is you know you know upset and sad about the situation of the country be a fighter there there can be so many bad things happening around you but look for the good in people look for good positive people that you can you know you can your hope can be in them and before you know it you know those things will start reflecting in your life and you start everything i say starts with the mindset so if you see people who are thriving in the midst of this storm and just try to emulate their lives take them as mentors they don't have you don't have to be speaking to them every day you don't even have to have access to them i have people all over the world who mentor me through their activities through their lives look at those people and let them be examples for you and you see that eventually you know different things will start manifesting for you so just be a fighter and just you know the luck luck will come if i die odoro simiati thank you for coming on hard copy thank you so much for having me i enjoyed it Be a fighter. What a word to live by. Well, that's where we leave the program tonight. But we want to hear from you. Use the handles showing on your screen. And if you want more of those brilliant women, their full interviews will be on our website, channelstv.com. Thank you for watching.
I'm Mo Kwe Ogun Yusuf. Good night.